Hi everyone, this is the last video in the series of basic methods for forecasting and we're going to talk about exp exponential smoothing methods. So if you remember from the previous videos, we, we described classical additive decomposition and the idea was try to infer the trend using a center moving average and then from that create a detrended series and from that extract the signal component and so on and so forth. But one in ingredient in this method was the center moving average. But if you remember from this video in the past, we discussed that sometimes the moving average is not a very good idea. Because if you remember this analogy with the TV shows, sometimes we have to give different weights to the past history. So the moving average is basically is pondering in the same way all, all the neighbors of, of a given observation. But the exponential moving average is given in different weights to the last observation and all the past history. So let's explore a little bit more this idea. So this is the same formula as before, but expressed in a slightly different way. So in this case, y hat is the same as the previous history. And then you take a look at this one minus alpha comes in here in a different and slightly way, but probably more intuitive. So basically we're saying that the new series is the last one. And this correction is the difference between what I expected, what I expected, sorry, and I observed it. So this is a way of correcting linearly this expression. So let's play a little bit with this expression. So imagine that you want to create a new series at times t plus 1, and then by the formula this is alpha times the last observation plus 1 minus alpha the previous one. And the previous one can be written in terms of one t minus 1. So this is alpha times the last observation plus alpha times 1 minus alpha times t minus 1, and you can proceed in, in the fashion. So alpha times 1 minus alpha square, this coefficient is going to be alpha times 1 minus alpha cube, and so on and so forth. So this is a geometric progression, and as alpha is lower than 1, 1 minus alpha is also lower than 1, its coefficient in the series is going to be lower than the coefficient uh, before. So if alpha is large, like in this case, then this is going to decrease really fast. For intermediate values, this is going to be decreased slowly, and if, if alpha is closer to 0, then you see that this is going to be smoother. And this is interesting because in this case we are almost stuck with the last observation, maybe the second last. And in this case we are taking the whole history back. So we have to, to balance between those extremes in, in all cases. Okay, so th this is the weight of the last observation and this is the weight of, uh, let's say, delay number 6 or lag number 6. Okay, we now have the new time series and, and also what? Well, we can, we can say that this is the smoothing function, so this is the new series. And forecasting is real simple, so basically we're saying that the next observation is going to be the result of this new smooth, uh, this smooth time series. Okay, a couple of problems with the method. The first one is that the prediction is flat in the sense that if we are moving each, each data points in the future, we are using the same prediction as before. And the second thing is that we need to start as L0, could be the, the first observation, but we could play with that. Uh, we also have to choose the, the best alpha in order to have the best prediction. And this is called flat forecast because of that, because after t plus 1, basically all the predictions are the same. So here you have an example with R, you can see the, the series is the, the black one. The, the red one is the fitted series, it's kind of a smooth, and then we are doing this prediction, but this is flat because we are stuck at this point. So we have learned a little bit until this point, but we are not learning anymore. Okay, so how can we improve that? Okay, if you take a look at this, the air passengers in Australia, this is the trend line. Remember that we have played with this data set before, and we have some seasonality, but this is the trend. So what if we want to learn about the trend? Okay, you, you can see that this is increasing over time. So it's a pity to stop here and then go back and have this flat observation. So how can we improve this? Okay, uh, Holt had this brilliant idea. And, and the idea was to define two series, one for the trend and one for the series itself. So let's take a couple of parameters now. We have alpha and beta, and beta is going to be a kind of exponential moving average, but in the sense that we are playing with the, with the trend. So if you look at here, we are subtracting the original data, or sorry, the, the smoother data at different times. So this is the slope, and we are weighting the past history of the trend and the last slope. And then we plug this into the level, into the smooth part of the function. And again, as before, we have alpha times the last observation. And now instead of using the, the, the smoothed version of, of the curve, we are also adding the trend. So this is like replacing the, the new observation with the last one, plus the history of both the trend and the linear and the level, okay? And forecasting is really simple. If I want to, to predict m steps in the future, um, I have the slope and I have to multiply this by the number of steps, okay? 
So let's see how this plays and this works nicely. So in this case in which the trend is clear, you can see that he has learned, the method has learned brilliantly the trend. And so we have this idea that we have a smooth curve, but also we have a good idea of the smooth uh, trend. Uh, t t take into account that if we go back to the basic methods that we described in the first video, in that case we were using the slope from the first and the last observation. In this case, probably they are going to be the same, but imagine a curve in which it's going up and then going back. So this method is better than the old, than the old one. Okay, going back to this figure, more interesting idea. So what if this prediction is too stubborn? So may maybe it's... I know, maybe it's so stuck in this idea that this is growing that it's not going to capture any variation in the data, but sometimes we have these ups and downs, so probably this prediction is not taking into account this kind of fluctuations around the trend. So an alternative to this Holtz method is called the damp linear trend method, and the idea is really simple. So take the Holtz method, remember that we are using an exponential average for the trend, for the slope, and an exponential average for the level. And in this case, we are adding this correction. So we are not using the trend uh, straightforwardly from this series. So we have uh, this coefficient, which is going to be also lower than one. And the idea is that you are not given the same way to the level and the trend. So we are kind of smoothing it out the impact of the trend. So if you, if you try to replace that in the, pro in the projection, what you're saying is that if you go to st many steps in the future, the effect of the trend that we have learned from the previous step is going to dilute so this is going to decrease progressively. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And here we go. So this is the prediction into the future. Of course, this dumping comes from the idea that you have to accommodate some space for these lows. But of course, if you live long enough, then this is going to converge to the original method in which we have a level which is going to be flat all the time. So basically, the dumped holds method is an interpolation between the flat method, the, the simple exponential method, and this holds method. Okay, you are smart enough to realize that at this point in the in the lectures, probably you have realized, okay, what about seasonality? Because here we've been talking about the trend. Okay, of course, all of these methods have the, their counterparts and, and they are called, for instance, whole winter exponential smoothing, which is the whole method, but taking seasonality away. And again, the idea is brilliant. So why not applying this idea of moving average, of exponential moving average to seasonality? And again, in this case, we are using a detrended series and we are trying to to create the new season according to a weight between the detrended series and the past history okay i'm not going to devote much time you can do this for multiplicative seasonality but you get the main idea of the video okay so let's take an example in this case we have uh, as we discussed before we have trend we have seasonality and probably we have multiplicative uh, residuals because you can see that the variation between the peaks and the valleys is increasing also with time so if we apply a box box transformation or a logarithm or whatever, then the we correct that and we still can apply this method. And you can see how this uh, you have this seasonality, you have the trend, and then you have this whole method, whole winter methods in, with additive or multiplicative forecast. And you can see that they are performing more or less the same. Okay, in R, you have different methods to implement those. And the simple exponential smoothing is called SES. And the holds method is hold, and if you want to apply dumping, you have to take, change this to true. And the whole winters is uh, HW, and again, you have to play a little bit, so you have to decide what type of seasonality you have, if seasonal or not, like in the previous example, if you have dumping or not, and of course the window of, of the future observations. If you want to plot the result, you also have auto plot, and auto plot is going to give you this nice type of plot in which you have the observed data set, the level, the slope, and the, the seasonality of the series. And don't, don't forget that you can mix and match all these sort of plots, so you can compare different methods using the function or layers. So I, give, I leave that to you as an exercise.